Hello, friends. Hi, it's time to stay up. Setting everything up still. Give me a second. It's Thursday, right? I'm not seeing my comments. That's what I'm trying to bring up here. Because I want to be able to see. There we go. Okay. Now I can see all my friends' comments. All right. Welcome, guys. It's Nicole Steele. I'm the owner and designer of The Joyful Stamper, and I go live every Thursday right here at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on my Facebook page. And you can always watch the replay if you can't make the live. Um, I know sometimes daytimes people work and have doctor's appointments and stuff, so the good thing is Facebook records these. I put these on YouTube. I put, them on my, put this on my blog, so there's lots of ways to watch this, but I'm so glad that you're joining me, whether live or via a replay. Um, you're joining me to stamp today, so welcome. Hi, Sharon. I am doing fantastic. How are you? Oh, it has not felt like fall here still, but it's really sunny out, so can't complain. Can't complain. Okay, so today I am going to show you guys how to make two quick and pretty Christmas cards. Um, I know at Christmas time everybody needs lots of multiples. They need fast but pretty solutions because, you know, we usually send out a lot of cards at Christmas, so I have two options for you. But we're going to take care of some housekeeping stuff before um, we start. So we're going to, you know, talk talk shop here for a minute, stamping up. So I have started something called a creativity kit, and I did one last month using Gilded Autumn and Gathered Leaves, and this month I'm going to use Poinsettia. Am I saying that right? Point, is it Poinsettia? Poinsettia? I say it Poinsettia. But um, I'm going to use the Poinsettia Petals Bundle, which is this stamp set and this die set right here. And I'm going to show you what um, the creativity kit is. I'm super excited about it. I absolutely love the cards I made for this. So what you're going to get is you're going to get at least $20 of product in each kit. So you'll get a full container. Mine is partially used here, but you'll get a full container of these beaded embellishments. You can see I used a lot of them. I promise you there's a lot more in this kit, <laughs> a lot more in the container. But you're going to get some beaded embellishments. You're going to get a brand new full spool of the Real Red Sheer Ribbon, and you'll use these on your project. Um, there's a little stamp and sponge in there, because we'll do some sponging on the product. You'll make four over-the-top cards, and I've got some bonus ideas for you guys. And your project kits are going to come with everything cut and scored and ready for you to assemble. You're also going to get a quarter pack of the Poinsettia Petals, a po sorry, Poinsettia Place Designer Series Paper. And you'll get a quarter pack of the plush specialty poinsettia designer series paper. And this stuff is gorgeous to work with. It's flocked. So it's got that nice touchable texture. It'll look great on your cards. And you're going to use all of this to make the projects. And I record um, a video. And what I do is I don't do anything ahead of time in these videos. I want you to feel like you are in the stamping room with me, taking a class with me. So I cut... Um, all the paper just as if you were going to have to cut it too. I die cut everything just as you, if you were going to have to die cut it too so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. You can take your time. There's no rush. There's no hurry. It's just meant to be fun and relaxing and you're going to have some gorgeous cards when you're done. I promise you're going to like them. I also have a written PDF of instructions for these projects too in case you're a person that likes to follow step-by-step -step written things. And I throw in my signature treat in there too, just as a thank you and something fun uh, to do while you're stamping. So if you want these, the deadline for this creativity kit is October 11th, which is this Sunday. The kits are $35. That includes the shipping. And you will need this to do the kit. If you want to add this on, you can do so at catalog price. I pay the shipping and tax on this bundle for you. Just let me know in the email if you want to add this on. And the, my blog, um, thejoyfulstamper.com, has a post that lists the colors of ink and adhesive I used, and it's not a lot. 
I think there's maybe three or four ink colors I use, three different adhesives. So, um, but yeah, but yeah, I hope you, um, hope we'll do it. I had a lot of fun designing these. I'm really excited about these. So yeah, take a, take a gamble on it. Why not? Have a couple hours to yourself. You deserve it, right? You deserve it. All right. And then the other things we're going to, um, I have to announce joy to the world, this paper pumpkin kit. It, October 10th is the last day to sign up. But here's the thing, guys. If you sign up at all in October with me as a subscriber to Paper Pumpkin, and it can be the October kit or the November kit, but sign up in November, I'm going to put your name in a drawing to win a free one-month prepaid code for Paper Pumpkin. So everyone's name goes into that hat who subscribes to Paper Pumpkin in October with me, Nicole Steele. And I will do the drawing on November 3rd for that one month prepaid code. So you could potentially get a month of paper pumpkin for free. So just give it a try. Oh, thanks so much for sharing, guys. And I do have the prizes for that. So I will get to that in a minute. I appreciate you guys sharing. It helps me out a lot. There's the designer series paper sale. That's the whole month of October. And actually the poinsettia place designer series paper that's in the kit, my creativity kit, and that I'm going to use today is part of this sale. So if you really like this paper, um, you can get it for 15% off. Anyone that orders from this designer series paper sale in October, I'm gonna send you a four pack of handmade holiday cards with your order. I absolutely love making Christmas cards and I wanna send you some. So if there's paper you like, you can get it on sale and you'll get some handmade cards made by me. And this is this October's reward code. So you use this to earn Joyful Stamper reward points. And I have the details for that on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com. But it's just my way of saying thank you to you guys for supporting my business, for letting me share and do what I love. And I just really hope I'm inspiring you guys and getting you excited about the hobby of stamping. Because it's just, it's so fun and it's so purposeful and so rewarding. So you can use this code on all your orders in October to earn Joyful Stamper reward points. Okay, and the sharing part, the sharing part. Yes, I have prizes for sharing. So last week I had um, these square vellum doilies as the prize for sharing and Sherry Turner was the winner for that one. So Sherry, email me your address within two weeks of today's live class in order to claim this. Um, my email address is Nicole at the joyful stamper.com and the prize I'm giving away next week for sharing are these holiday rhinestone basic jewels. So I just ordered a bunch of stuff from Stampin' Up to replenish my prize box. These are beautiful. I have used up all my packages of these on my projects and I thought, you know, they're perfect for fall and Christmas cards, New Year's Eve cards. So all you have to do, hit the share button in this live and then uh, type shared in the comments. Facebook doesn't tell me who actually shared it. So the only way I know you shared is if you type the word shared in the comments. So make sure you do that after you hit the share button and I'll have a drawing next week for someone to win this. So guys, thank you again so much. Am I showing my gratitude enough? <laughs> I really am appreciative. All right. Well, you came here to stamp, so let's stamp. This is what I'm using. Point set of place. It's on page 15 of your catalog. So if you have your catalog, pull it out. You can um, follow along with me at the different products that I'm using and here's the little color scheme over here that's found within the designer series paper and oh my goodness guys I've used up almost my whole pack of this paper it is stunning absolutely stunning and I use all of this in my creativity kit so you'll get to play with a little sampling of all of this and but I'm going to show you two quick cards you can make with this all right this is the first one. Oh my goodness, that's not supposed to be there. I think I had lotion on my hands. <laughs> Yikes. So just ignore that little splotch right there. Um, but this card seriously can be made in under 15 minutes. And we as demonstrators get these weekly emails from Stampin' Up! packed with ideas. And I saw a card set very similar to this and I thought that is wonderful for Christmas. If you've got to make multiples and um, you want something that still looks pretty, I thought this was great and I love that it used cinnamon cider <clears throat> that's a color that I don't use a whole lot and I just I thought that was really unique to pair that as a Christmas card all right so let's begin and you can see um, it uses really very minimal supplies so um, you don't have to invest a lot 
to make this card. So we're using Whisper White and we're using Cinnamon Cider. This is five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored at four and a quarter. And as always, I will have a project sheet for both of the projects today with measurements and it will be in the description to this video here. And something new I'm doing is I actually have a picture of the projects in my project sheet and all you have to do is click it to see the list of all the products that I used. So that makes it nice and simple. If you see something that you absolutely have to have, you just gotta click and that's it. So I'm using this open berry sprig image here from Poinsettia Petals. Let me put that on my block. And I'm gonna use cinnamon cider. Here's the thing though, I don't have the cinnamon cider ink pad. I do have the ink color markers and I'm gonna use the brush tip end. And I'm gonna color on this berry sprig with my marker. But if you have an ink, the cinnamon cider ink pad, go ahead and use it. But you know, creativity demands that you use what you have. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm gonna stamp this um, up there. And now I'm gonna color another one. We're gonna stamp a total of three of these. So it's October, do you guys, um, I don't know, do you guys have October activities that you like to do? Do you go apple picking? Do you go to the pumpkin patch? Do you go to corn mazes? There's a lot of options out there. I went to a corn maze once up in New Hampshire. I would like to go again. I like things that make me think, like crossword puzzles. And Okay, I'm gonna stamp it a third time, right there. Now I may come back and add more, I will decide after I stamp and die cut my points that is there. The other thing we're going to use the cinnamon cider marker for is our sentiment. And I'm going to use warm wishes from our home to yours. I love the fonts in this particular set. They're, they're kind of fancy. I like it. Actually, this is a clear stamp. I don't have to worry about lining it up. I'll put it on that way. And I'm gonna use my cinnamon cider marker to color on this again. Now you wanna make sure you go gentle when you're using your markers to color in your stamps because you don't wanna ruin your brush tip. I mean, no matter how inexpensive your stamping supplies might be, they're still an investment and you wanna take care of them. We want many happy hours of stamping. Okay, I'm just gonna go a little breath on that and I'll stamp it on that whisper white square. Peel it away. Ooh, I love this cinnamon cider. Why am I not using it more? It's such a nice, warm, spicy brown. I love cinnamon actually. I love it. I put it in oatmeal, I put it in yogurt, everything. Okay, now I go off on a tangent when I stamp. I hope you don't mind my chattiness. <laughs> Feel free to jump in and tell me your stories. I'm going to use this large base layer of the poinsettia for my stamp, and I'm going to use this large leaf here. So we have a few stamps we need to get prepared here. So I've got my large leaf. I have got, actually I'm going to put that on a smaller block. Less chance of getting ink on everything. And then I'm going to put my large leaf on there. And I don't know if you can see, I filled in the color there. There's a stamp for that right here. And we're gonna use those. So I need to get a couple blocks for that. Let's see, I keep my blocks in a basket right beside me on my desk so that they're always handy. And I'm gonna use real red and shaded spruce. Fumbling a bit here. Okay. First thing, we'll stamp the leaves. And that's what these two whisper white squares right here are for. And we're going to stamp them in shaded spurs. I'm going to go full strength with this. So there's one. And there's two. Now what I'm going to do is take that little filler image. And actually, let me move that to a smaller block. I'll just clean this one off and 
using the right size block lessens the chances of getting ink around the edge and transferring it to your paper there. Now what I'm going to do is ink up in shaded spruce and I want a lighter color in the middle of those leaves. So what I'm going to do is stamp off once on some scrap paper and then I will go ahead and put that in the middle there. So you see how you can get two different shades of a color with one ink pad. This is called generation stamping. You could even stamp it off twice if you want to get a third shade of it. And I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, poinsettia. I'm going to ink it up in real red at full strength for that base layer. And oops, stamp it right there. And then I'm going to come in with that little filler stamp, that two-step stamp, ink it up in real red, stamp it off on scratch paper, and then I'm going to stamp it on there. And I'm going to do it again. This is a larger image, so and I'm going to offset it. So I inked it up, stamped it off once, still in real red, and I'm offsetting it so I can fill it in there. That looks pretty. And now we have to die cut everything. So we're going to use the point set of dies to go ahead and do that. Let me get my stamps here out of the way. Got lots going on here. Okay, make sure I don't lose any pieces because I have been known to do that. There is a little really tiny flower center to these poinsettias and I could not for the life of me find the stamp and I found it stuck to the bottom of a stamp case. What makes it even harder is it's a clear stamp. So those little buggers are really hard to find once you lose one of those, but I've never permanently lost one. Okay, got dies for this, got my stamp and cut and emboss machine out. And I'm going to use, I believe it's this the large one. No, it's the smaller leaf. Okay. Lining those up. Put my clear plate on top. And we're running it through. Now we have to cut out one more leaf. So I'm going to have to run it through again. And there's nothing, there's actually two sizes of leaves, leaves in this set. So there's nothing stopping you from using the larger one. You could, you could do that too. In fact, I may have done that on my original card, but it won't matter. Okay. Now we've got the second one. out of the way. We will see that machine again on the second project. Okay, let me bring in my pieces and now we're set to assemble this. Everything's getting stamped in dimensionals. We want to lift everything up and it's particularly helpful to use dimensionals on the poinsettia because it makes it easy to slide these leaves underneath it. Okay, first up is going to be the sentiment. We'll position that and we'll put that right here. And now before I actually permanently stick these down, I'm gonna do sort of like a dry fit just to make sure I have those sprigs where I want them to be and to make sure that I don't wanna stamp another one. Okay, I think I might do another one right up there. So I'm gonna bring back out my marker and my stamp and I'm going to stamp another one and I'm going to do it right here okay I just wanted to it looked a little empty up in that area to me peeling everything off and I also, once I have this, this liner, um, the liner of the Stampin' Dimensionals off, I'm just laying it down. I'm not pressing it down because I want to give myself some wiggle room if I choose 
to rearrange everything. So as long as I don't press down too tightly or too hard, um, I still have time to rearrange it. I'm happy with that, so I'll go ahead and give it some more pressure. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use some wonderful gems to add some sparkle to this. I feel like these were overlooked in the holiday catalog, and they're actually really pretty because they're little gems and they have glitter. Um, I don't know. Somehow they got glitter into these gems, and I'm going to use some red ones to scatter around this card. Now, what I do with my Facebook Lives is... If you place an order of $35 or more before shipping and tax in my online store by midnight of the of this Sunday, I will send you the, the kits to make both of these projects today. So be sure to use that October host code. Make sure you get the order in by midnight this Sunday. And I will cut and prep and mail your kit out to you next week. So you'll have something to uh, stamp next week. Quick and easy Christmas cards. Oh, there you go. That's the first one. Just ignore that smudge. I'm going to have to cover that one up somehow. Maybe some sponging or something. <laughs> I have no idea how that got there. But that is the first Christmas card. And I can see, yes, I did use the larger leaves on my first card. But it's okay because you know what? I can always go back and add more if I want to. But I'm happy with this. So, okay, that's the first Christmas card that I have for you guys. Cinnamon Cider, such a nice warm color for Christmas. And the next card, let me see. here it is. This one right here. So you know how you have all those little skinny strips of designer series paper and you can't quite bring yourself to throw them out? We're gonna put them to good use on this card. My team leader, my Stampin' Up! team leader, Lissa Zvalonik, is a genius at using designer series paper scraps, and she made a card um, doing something similar to this, and I thought, that's what I'm going to do. I had all these scraps left over from designing my creativity kit class, and I thought this is the perfect time to use those up. So I've got my packet right here. So we're going to get started. And it looks like a lot of pieces, but it's really not. It's only because of these paper strips right here. So it's all good. It's all good. All right, so we're going to use soft sea foam. And I love how soft this green is. It pairs really nicely with shaded spruce and our other greens. This is a four and a quarter by 11 inch card. And it's scored down the middle at five and a half inches. So we've got that and we're going to set this aside for now and we are going to do some die cutting and stamping um, and embossing. So let's go ahead first and we're going to stamp our flowers, our poinsettias. And we are going to use, instead of the that flower base, we're going to use this large poinsettia right here. I do need the bigger block for this one. Okay, and then we're going to go down the si next size, and let me wipe the red off of this. Red ink is the one ink that seems to get everywhere, no matter how careful I am. And then we have the next smallest one, and that also has red on it, or green on it. Let's wipe that off. Some paper towel fuzz. Okay. Um, what else do we need? I, those are the only three stamps we need, actually. And we're going to use the same sentiment, warm wishes from our home to yours. Now, we are going to stamp in mint macaron ink on soft sea foam cardstock. Are there colors that, stamping up colors that you guys just don't seem to play with a whole lot um, that could use a little more love? I don't know. I know people tend to gravitate towards their favorite colors. Okay, that was mint and macaron. And we're just going to keep going down in size. These are all in mint macaron. And that is what I love about these dies, is being able to create three-dimensional poinsettias. Okay. And now I'm going to bring back my um, Stampin' 
cut and emboss machine and we are gonna die cut and emboss it up. I wanted a little more interest to my background. So what I'm doing is taking a four and an eighth by five and three eighth inch um, piece of soft sea foam cardstock and I'm going to emboss it with the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder. Now this is a 3D embossing folder, so it's gonna give me an extra deep impression. So all I need to use in my embossing machine is plate one and plate four. And I'm cranking it through. And we've got some nice subtle texture there. Love that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next is die cut some flower centers. And these are teeny, teeny tiny dies. Some of the smallest I've ever seen. But I like that little bit of so saffron in the middle of my flower. So I'm taking these two tiny dies there. Those are the flower centers. And again, a great use of paper scraps. those two pieces okay and now we are going to cut the flowers out and each petal is shaped a little bit differently so you'll be able to line them up but you'll just have to turn your um, dies here a little bit until you can get it just right. I'm gonna go ahead and run these through three separate times because I don't want my dies to bump into each other. When I stamped, I was thinking of uh, getting them all on this one sheet of paper so I didn't leave enough room between each of them to lay the dies all down at one time. But when you stamp them, you can certainly do that. I always get excited with dies like this when I get the shape matched up in one shot without having to turn it around like I just did there. <laughs> it's like a stamp room victory. I like being able to win in the little areas of life, right? Little victories. Maybe it's just me. Okay. Now we'll cut out the last poinsettia. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong and driving you guys crazy. <laughs> you can correct me. I don't profess to um, know a lot about flowers and plants. All right, and that's the last thing that we have to cut out. Sometimes I wonder how we stamped before die cutting machines because it seems like we use them on every project now doesn't it I mean what, how did we stamp before them did we just fussy cut or I don't know not cut shapes at all I can't remember all right now we're gonna lay everything out so let's glue our flower together first and I'm just gonna use liquid glue to stack these all together and I'm gonna put glue only in the center because I'm gonna pinch these petals and give this flower some spectacular eye-catching interest. But I'm gonna have to let that dry first. Now this one, this is the flower center. I'm just gonna dab really tiny amounts of glue onto there. You don't need much because there isn't much paper to hold down. And I'm gonna glue that together Put a little dot in the center of that flower and I'm going to stick that down on there. And I'm just going to wipe off that extra. And we'll set that aside because now we are going to glue our paper strips. So now you just cut your extras into three quarters of an inch wide by five inches. It has to be at least five inches. And I'm separating them out by piles here. Actually, I'm going to, I use this one for the sentiment, so I'm going to set that one aside for a little bit. Okay. I'm going to line up the first one here. Let me see. I want this one and I'm going to make this one go this way. 
So for the first one, I run a strip of liquid glue, not from com the complete top to the bottom, because remember, some of it's going to hang over, but just in the middle there a little bit like that, because I don't want to glue my paper to my surface. And I'm going to glue this right here at a slight angle. It's just a little bit of an angle. Now I'll do this one next. And because I know I can line this up now right against that one, I can just, I know where it's going. So I'm just going to run a little line of glue right next to that. And make sure your paper's going the right way. Now because there's a pattern on both sides of the designer series paper, you'll have lots of options for doing this. And I'm sure you guys have lots of scraps that you can pull out and play with and do this technique um, with. Okay, and I'm just lining it up straight up against the previous one. And I'll take another strip. And you can do as many strips as you want. There's no hard and fast rule. I think I ended up doing six. Yes, I did. I did six. Now this would be something good to do when you're catching up on your favorite TV shows because it's repetitive and it's relaxing and you don't have to think too, too hard about doing this. Let me lay that on top. Otherwise I'm going to end up squeezing that glue out. Okay. So there we go. We've got that. I'm going to lay this aside to dry for a little bit before I trim off that extra and we're going to stamp the grading. Okay. So here's the thing I had a tough time with. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I originally stamped this one in white with white embossing powder and then I stamped another one in shaded spruce. I think I like the white one better. This shaded spruce just looks a little bit too dark to me for this card, but again, it's all personal preference. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it in white again because I just like it. I like how soft it is. So I'm getting at my Versamark ink pad and I'm using Warm Wishes. And it actually, this strip is still three quarters of an inch by five inches. And this will fit on there. And I'm stamping it over more towards the left because my flower is going to go on the right hand side. And now I'm going to sprinkle it with white embossing powder. I could have done this stuff ahead of time, I realize. But I get people who are new to stamping watching this and some of them have never seen the magic of embossing before. And I know that this is what really hooked me when I saw this. So, nope, I got powder on me. Um, if you get extra powder anywhere, just take a little brush and you can brush off the extra. Or if you have what Stampin' Up! used to carry, an embossing buddy, you can use that before you stamp your image. Now I'm going to turn this heat gun on. And I'm using a heat gun so I can melt the powder. I want it to get smooth and shiny. Can you, are you able to see that change? So many cool techniques you can use with embossing powder. I know I'm a scrapbooker and sometimes what I will do is melt the embossing powder and then while it's still warm I will take a letter stamp and press it into the embossing powder so it's like I don't know that I don't even know what it's called but you know how you have metal jewelry and they uh, put designs into it that's what it looks like. And I trimmed off the excess of this paper here, so I'm left with that. And this is going to get glued to the front of my card. And I'm just going to use liquid glue for that. Um, actually, sorry, let me back up a step here. Let me back up. This is going to get glued to this front first because I want to trim this the extra off of this piece. And I'm just going to use liquid glue for that. And I, again, I'm not going all the way to the ends because I want to cut off the part that's hanging over. And I don't want to gunk up my scissors. 
Now this one you might have to do a little bit experimenting with, but the liquid glue will give you some wiggle room. You want to make sure your flower is not hanging off the edge of your card. So lay your flower down on top of it so you can adjust that greeting so that you know where you want it to go. And then I will trim off the extra of that. Okay, and now we can glue it to our card. I should just leave my glue uncapped. It's a habit though. You could cut your paper, this layer here, to four inches by five and a quarter inches if you don't like dealing with eighths of an inch, but I like the tight border that the four and an eighth by five and three eighths inch gives. Okay, now we're going to put our flower on here and this one is going to go on with liquid glue but before I do that I'm going to take these petals and I'm going to pinch them and by pinching them in the center it gives them a lot more depth and interest and realism and it looks really good so I'm just putting my like one finger in the middle and using my other two fingers to pinch up the sides of the petal around my pointer finger Okay, then we are going to glue it on. And I have got some shine and sparkle I want to add to this card. So let me pull out my Wink of Stella. Let me see, I've got a couple of these. Here, this is the one I used. And I'm trying to find my wonderful gems too. I did add them to this card, but I can't find them. Okay, so this is Wink Estella, and I went really heavy over these petals with it. I hope the camera can pick this up, because it really is pretty. And if it starts to run a little bit, of dry, little bit dry, it says push on the side of it. Just give it a couple squeezes, and more will flow out. I went, I, like I said, I went with a heavy hand on this because I really wanted this to shimmer. Now the other thing you can do is use that champagne or frost white um, concoction with rubbing alcohol that I had made. I think I used it, what, last week on my Halloween card? You can use that to um, spray over your flower before you adhere it to the card. Or heck, you could spray the whole card if you wanted to, really. It's up to you. Now, the other thing I did do is I added from the Wonderful Gems pack these gems right here and I stuck them there but I seriously can't find them. They're are hidden from me right now. <laughs> I don't know where they went but if I could find them I would add them. So but again I will include those in your project kit pack if you happen to um, place an order to get these kits um, that for the projects I'm making today. So let me pull out the other two ones. So I got those cards too. So, oh my gosh, I hope you guys liked these today. That is bugging me that I can't find those gems. I know they're around here. I'll find them as soon as I turn this off, guaranteed. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're glad you got it, Sharon? Yeah. I am too. And I'll tell you, I'm not somebody that goes for sets that have a lot of pieces to them. But I saw the possibilities with this, of being able to layer them or to create a background with them. And then the sentiments are so classic for Christmas. And I'll show you, this image right here is one I particularly love. I absolutely love that. I don't know why. But here's something else I discovered, and we do this in my Creativity Kit class. These dies that go with this set, you can use them to cut out images from the plush point set of specialty paper too. So, and I do have you do that in that creativity kit. So I was super excited when I discovered that. So, okay guys, so um, thanks for watching today. Make sure you share this to be in a drawing for a prize. If you want these project kits, just order by Sunday night, a $35 order in my store, shop with nicole.stampinup.net. And if you want the creativity kit that uses this um, bundle, 
email me that by October 11th also. Nicole at the joyful stamper.com. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Thursday. So um, thanks for stopping by. Bye.